Hello everyone, and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Today, I'm going to be doing this pyro effect. Where does this character running through fire? So as you can see here, we are going to be using divergence fields to kind of push fire out of the way when we have a character run through it. And then following tutorial, we'll discuss how you can suck fire into certain areas of in positions of moving characters using divergence fields as well, but that will be coming in the next one. So let's get started. So the first step, step we're going to do is drop down a geo node. I'm just going to call this build. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to dive inside. And the two things that we need to get started on doing is creating our emitter and also bringing in our object that we are going to be using as a collision or character for running through this fire. What I'm going to do up here is I'm navigating up to Mixamo. And if you've never used Mixamo, it is an amazing resource where you can find animations that you can actually use to put through your overall kind of like scene. And it's pre-animated characters, so if you need test geometry, you need just showcase effects on things, it's really, really amazing. And you can also find animations associated with different characters as well. And it's really, it's a really amazing resource. So I really recommend checking it out. So for today, I'm using a couple of animations from Mixamo. So we'll get started from there. So the next thing we're going to do is I need to set up my emitter. And my emitter, I'm going to use a basic grid. I'm going to go copy relative, copy parameter, paste relative references. And I'm just going to give this a lot of subdivisions so we get a lot of resolution in our emitter. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the size a little bit more. So I'm going to do 0.5, say 3. So we have a really small size uh, kind of grid like this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to attribute noise. And I'm going to drop down an attribute noise. And I'm just going to add some noise values to the scene. But what I am going to do is switch this over to a float. So we're going to have some black and white values. We're going to make the element size really small like this. And what we are going to do is we're going to enable a remap, bring this down here like that so we have some value correction on there. I want to also, element size, go to my axes here and just begin to stretch everything so we have a little more of a jagged pattern. So I'm going to lower this and do do do. That should be good for now. So we have some black and white values. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to a scatter. And now we're going to create some base stuff for our scattered elements. So we also want to use a density attribute called CD. And CD is going to just pick up all those points. And we don't want the black areas to have points. So what we want to do is go back up here to our attribute noise and just kind of narrow this down ever so slightly. So we get something like that. We want a high res emitter, so probably a lot of points here is a good idea. The next thing we want to do is we want to copy this because we want multiple layers of fire as our character runs through them. So what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using a copy transform and I'm going to transform this by one. I'm going to give this three and a uniform scale of 0 0.9. So they're a little bit smaller each time the character kind of runs through them. I might say Eight, actually that might be the best here and then from there the fun part happens where we get to make our pyro flames so I always like to start out with a preset because it's just quicker for me than dropping down five or ten nodes at once so I am going to go to frame one plug and get rid of this little smoky base plug this into here go to my pyro source and I wanted to basically keep input and I also want to generate it's right now just generating density and temperature I also wanted to basically initialize burn and also initialize fuel because we need those later on another thing we will actually need is velocity but we don't actually have it on our kind of system here yet so we're gonna have to go backwards a step and add it back on but that's okay but what we need to initialize velocity here on the pyro source so we're going to go over here choose velocity and now that's initialized, we're all good to go here. Now above here, what I really want to do is I want to drop down something called a point velocity sop. Point velocity is going to allow me to put velocity values, and I'm going to put on my visualizer here, all my points. And basically what I'm going to do is basically set to value. I'm going to give it a value of 1, so we can see that in the axes, y. And then we're going to go to curl noise, 
and we are going to play with this roll size like this. Now all of that is locked in so we can see our fire moving like this, which is fantastic. Now we're not gonna need this down here, so we're gonna delete that. And we're gonna have to go to our volume rasterize attributes over here. And this is where it's gonna get hard to see, so I recommend going to D for your display options, going to dark, and now you can actually see. So now we're going to lower this and lower particle scale. So we get something high res enough, but also not really in the way. Um, and we're gonna want velocity blur. So that's gonna be our base emitter. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna cache everything out. I'm gonna call this pyro emitter. And I'm going to go save to disk in background. And the next thing we're going to do is just add a little null underneath because I like to just label my outputs and inputs. And now is a good time to go to your edit. Now we will bring in our Mixamo animation. Now for the uh, character part. So we're gonna use an FBX character import. And we're gonna bring that into Houdini right here. Then we're gonna go to our FBX file. And I'm just gonna choose my running animation. And it's gonna bring in everything like this. This isn't going to move, so there's another thing we actually have to do when you're working with FBX character imports. So you have to use something called a bone deform. I'm putting a bone deform underneath here. We'll basically add the animation back onto our character rig. So now we have that run. But you might notice at, you know, frame 45, it stops running. So we have to loop that animation. And it's also going to be now my turn to kind of lower my frame range down to one that I like. So I'm going to use 120 20 frames. And I'm also going to make sure my character is aligned with my source. So I'm going to look over here and she is unfortunately running in the opposite direction. So I'm going to transform her and just rotate her into the correct spot. So, or maybe even just 90 degrees. So she's going to start there on frame one. So we probably want her to start probably around here. And then she'll wrap up around there. Now the next one I'm going to do is I want to use a time warp. So I'm going to plug in and I'm going to basically say my input frame range is... 45, my output frame range is 45, and I want to go post cycle. So basically what this is going to do is now loop my animation like this, and at some point it will restart, but that's okay. Like look at that go. We now have a running character that's doing really well. Now the fun part is we're going to add a little null underneath here because this is where we start to set up our divergence fields. We're going to go out character, and before we do anything I'm just going to promote this to the surface so we can see well, we work on our fire, also another view of this character. I'm gonna just go over here, go to geometry, go out character, OVJ, import. And then we're gonna go character. So we should be able to build a fire here and look at our character at the same time. Now for the fun part, we get to build these divergence fields. So now we just also want to save our file before going forward. All right, so now we're going to drop down a VDB from Polygons. I find this node works the best when setting up divergence fields because it allows you to do a couple different things. And let me show you how or what it's going to do. So right now we want to change this distance VDB to a fog VDB, and we want to call this divergence. Divergence is a field that Houdini will recognize, and we want to make sure we're accessing that. The next thing we want to do is just shrink down our voxel size. So we're gonna hide it so we can kind of see our character. Now, this isn't might not work so well because if you zoom in on our arms, they're very thin. So we're probably going to want to create something, buffs them out a little bit more because we don't want the fire to collide with our arms. I'm also just for funds, even though this probably won't affect the simulation, the one thing I like to do is also make sure velocity is on my character. Because if it's not, like sometimes if I wanna factor this into into a collision later, it will need that velocity. I'm going to go down here, but we also need to transfer that velocity into the volume. We need to fill the interior, and we need to go to surface attributes. Basically, I'm gonna call this, uh, we can call it vel, it really doesn't matter at this stage. We can also go over here. Now that's great there, but we're gonna make sure, we're gonna use a volume wrangle. We're going to make sure this, is a, this divergent field is big enough and buff enough where we can fill in the feed and basically that fire won't collide with it. So we're gonna call at divergence times equals four. You can see it's getting a lot thicker, which is great. 
I'm gonna give it a value of times 10, just so I can really make sure that those hands are filled in. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna cache this out. I'm gonna go to a file cache and I'm gonna call this char verge and save and continue. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add a little null because we're gonna to need to reference this in a second. Call this out divergence field. All right, so now we're gonna navigate down to our pyro solver. Now the thing about our pyro is that you might notice, because we're so small, and our character is really under five meters, you might really have to play with the voxel size to get something to appear. But the other thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna actually actually have to add some pre-roll to this as well, because we want the fires, the flames to actually start before the character starts running through it. So what we need to do now is actually go back up to our pyro emitter, minus 25 or 35, depending on what you want to do. And we'll go save the disk and back. Now the next thing we're going to do while that's cooking out, we don't want to keep a super low voxel res while we're doing this, but we also want to have one that gives us resolution that we can kind of view. So that's what we're looking at right now. But what we also need to go over here is just turn off some things that we don't need anymore. So let's go to look. We don't need this. We can turn that off. Let's go to shape tab. Well, we don't need wind because we want it to go straight up. So I'm going to give it some buoyancy and I'm going to crank up my disturbance to something like 35. And I'm going to drop my base block size to something like 0.8. Turbulence wise, I'm going to give this like a 35. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I want some dissipation. So I'm going to give this one sort of less, something like that. I'm going to do, I think this is good settings for now. Let's go to sourcing. So right now at sourcing, we have density, we have temperature, we have velocity, but we do not have burn and we do not have fuel. So we're going to add two more of these. And we're gonna go source volume burn. We wanna put that probably into the flame. You also wanna go fuel. I like to put fuel into flame as well. And basically what we're also gonna do over here is navigate down to our bill resource smoke and we are going to change, use a constant color here. I like to use dark gray or light gray. And I'm gonna make this super dense. And for now, uh, that still hasn't finished cooking out yet, so we'll come re come re revisit that in a second. We're just going to come over here and just turn on fire so we can visualize some cool fire values. We'll come back and play with this later, but we would just want to make sure our flames are working. Now the fun part begins. We have to bring in our divergence source. So we're going to go source volume source, and we're going to plug that into the sources. And I'm also going to want more disturbance in the sim, so I'm going to go gas disturb and plug that into the force output. So this is going to go here. I'm just going to tidy this down to like 14. Now we're going to go to our volume source here and we're going to initialize expand and we are going to call this divergence. Basically, we want to make sure this is on the copy setting and this should work out pretty, really pretty, pretty well. I would say just we actually put this to a six on the source scale. So when our divergence field runs through, it actually looks pretty, pretty good. Now I'm gonna just wait for this to cash out and then we'll get started on the next step. Alrighty, so the next thing we're going to do is lower our timeline to 20, negative, not 35, but 25 frames because that's how much pre-roll we've given our source. So we'll kind of wait for that to cook out. Now it's my error out for a couple of reasons. One, it looks like our bounding box looks a little bit too small. So I'm gonna check in on our emitter. So our emitter is here. And let's also make, make sure our character divergence also has negative 25 frames. So I'm gonna save that to disk and background as well. From here, what we should have happen is that we should just have this field that picks up the character and as it walks through the fire repeatedly, kind of pushes the fire aside. So hopefully that will uh, be the end results once we kind of reset our simulation. So let's do that. Okay, we've got a little bit of an error here. Let's see what's happening. Ah, okay, so we missed a step here. We have to go inside here to the pyrosaurus and we actually have to link it to our soft path. And that's kind of what I forgot to do. So we're gonna output our divergence field here. Cool, so that looks a lot more promising. Let's go take a peek at our fire. Well, our disturbance values have gone off the board. Look at that. We might have to lower back our disturbance levels. I'm gonna give it a 15 here or a 12. Let's try again. All right, so they're still being a little bit poofy looking. So let's go inside, go to our gas disturb over here. And let's lower this down to two. Ooh, okay, that's looking a lot more like fire. Let's play this back and see what happens. 
Cool, look at that. We've got some flames. I would say we need to go back to our billowy smoke here. Don't nearly have enough, let's say, density as I'd like. So I'm gonna crank that up. We can see the fire there, I mean smoke there just fine. I think it's our fire values that are making it look weird. So let's go over here and use a physical black body shader. That's looking a little bit better. I think I might go back to my smoke, change the color again. Because this is low res, it's going to look like that, which is fine. Um, we just need to dial in our look dev. And, you know, play with the intensity scale as we see fit. Cool. But we don't have the diver- I don't think the diversion fields are working the way we intended because we should be seeing it getting pushed away from the character. So let's figure out why that is. I'm also going to just try... And go in here. Take a look at everything. Figure out why uh, this is not working. We have divergence. Cool, cool, cool. And we also, I'm just gonna crank this up and make it a really big. Well, that seems to be working now. Look at that. It completely flattens our pyro. But we also have pyro going down into the x axis, well, negative y axis here. So I actually want to, before I correct my fields, I'm going to go up here where it says bounds. Ah, so we go to ground planes, and what we need to do is we need to go close below. So we're going to turn that on. So once again, you can see it's clipped our fire, which is pretty cool. And now we got to fix our divergence fields. So we're going to lower this to maybe like a 23 and see how that goes from there. So that's looking pretty promising. We do need, I think, more res and the, these flames because I think it's too low res. And I also think that there's something up with our heat field. So I'm going to change something real fast. I'm going to go down here to temperature. Just kind of lower that to a 24. And what I'm also going to do is just crank up this temperature here and go reset the simulation. I think what we need to do just to finesse this a little bit more, I'm going to crank up the block size here. And I'm also going to give this maybe like 18. I think we might go inside here and just play with the gas to serve a little bit more. Maybe put that at a 1. And I'm going to lower this to 2. Alright, so I think that's looking pretty promising for flames. I think we might have some super dense smoke, but I think that's just a look dev issue. I'm going to lower this to like 73. Yeah, was there smoke making it look weird? So. Now let's see if this can run through the fire again. And let's see if we can get a good, better result. All right, so we actually have some really positive results with this. Look, as our character runs forward, you can s clearly see the f flames being pushed aside as they run through it. Now I'm not entirely happy with like the look that so far that's going on with the material, so I'm gonna switch over on the pyre billowy smoke um, volume to scatter. Scatter is another way of scattering fire values or fire intensities throughout everything and if you just play, play with the intensity scale you can actually create some really cool looking results you can do a hot core scale as well if you want to really amplitude that but sometimes it doesn't work the way you intend now you can also do compute range which will grab your you know your fire values and scatter everything on that for you now I'm going to switch this over for, to black body because I find that gets more accurate real world results in this case. So this might be cool. And we'll just play around with some settings. We want hot temperature. And I'm going to go back to smoke here and just crank that up to get some cool little dense waves in this. But yeah, that's how you would start create kind of a walkthrough wave of fire. Great work, and I will see you in the next tutorial.